Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Orphan Last, and today I'm going to go ahead and share with you guys a uh, little resource that I found uh, before I started making these tutorials. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, basically, this is a. I'm, I'm going to share this um, this web page URL inside of the video description of this video. So if you're interested, which I would recommend you get interested if you're not, um, you can go ahead and click on it. Uh, but anyway, so um, I'm just going to, like, I just refer to this as the animation notes um, because that's basically what the page is called. It's a .edu web, a website, and so that typically means that it's like a, a, a website that refers to a college or something along those lines. But anyways, like um, you can go ahead and look at the animation notes, animation projects, tools and techniques, um, like really cool stuff. Uh, but the most important stuff that I find is from this point onward to like say this point. Um, Disney Principles of Animation, you can click on that and uh, what you'll see is a, a website that talks about uh, these little principles of animation that uh, Disney artists were learning uh, just at the very beginning of animating, with different principles that they had to learn. And I would recommend giving this a good read. And if you have difficulty understanding these concepts, these principles, I recommend you go on to um, YouTube, and currently, if you type in Principles of Animation, you can find um, a series of videos that uh, are called Principles of Animation on, on a playlist. And they are made by Alan Becker Tutorials, and I found these pretty useful. Uh, even afterwards, you may feel like, oh, I just kind of sort of have a rough idea of what these principles are. Well, you know, a rough idea is better than not knowing at all and struggling while you're animating and not knowing how to make it better. So these principles, like if your animation isn't working for you, just, you know, just think about, okay, am I, am I missing, am I, is my animation uh, missing squash and stretch? Is it, do I need anticipation in, in the animation and is it missing? Is stage is my staging uh, working for me? Um, it, it, was I using straight ahead animation or post pose animation? Is that what I'm, what I'm what's causing problems? Um, all of this stuff. There's, just think about all, all of this stuff while while looking at your animation. And and typically, you can find if your animation doesn't look lifelike, and you consider all of these principles of animation you can usually find out what the problem is just by um, being your own critic and so um, <clears throat> yeah once again go like go on to the animation notes page and go on to YouTube and check these out they're invaluable to learn the, the basic principles of animation they they won't teach you how to use open tunes better or flash or Toon boom or any of those programs but it will teach you how to animate better when you sit down and actually draw one frame to the next frame to the next frame or one level to the next level to the next level um, the next one is pose to pose animation like this is this is some interesting information here um, where basically you just draw a series of poses and here th this is just a two pose uh, animation the smoke and, and the frosting is just two different uh, poses for that and uh, so uh, the animator would just draw these two poses here, and then um, once those poses were done, he would go ahead and draw all the in-between from this pose to this pose, all the in-between images for that. Um, and same thing with this, you know, that would be probably about four more drawings in total, depending on how fast you wanted him to squish. Um, so, like, uh, there are a lot of benefits to... Um, using pose to pose animation. Here there's three poses with this little animated guy going, just ducking and jumping and uh, so yeah uh, th there's there's a lot of benefits to this. You have an entire like using pose to pose animation you have an entire animation all planned out and then you go just from that point forward you just animate all the things in between 
the next option is uh, straight ahead animation, which um, let's see here, which is basically when you when you just draw your first frame, and then uh, you do all the in betweening um, from the very beginning, uh, from one post to the next, all throughout the whole thing. You're just doing all of it. Uh, from one point to another, nothing is planned out, and you can actually come out with some really cool animations with that technique. The problem is, is that uh, oftentimes, like if you just do straight ahead animation, the size of your characters and everything will wind up shifting, getting bigger, getting smaller, and stuff like that. Now, nowadays we have digital tools, and we can usually just use a selection tool and size them up or size them down. And so we have a few tools at our disposal that the uh, people that founded and actually started animating at the very beginning, tools that they don't have uh, or didn't have, we have a lot of tools that, that, that can rectify a lot of mistakes with straight ahead animation. But one of the other problems that you can't really fix that oftentimes comes from straight ahead animation is that a lot of times what will happen is the angle of your character will will change and that influences the the positioning and the angle of the back uh, of the camera and the the positioning and angling and rotation of the background and so if you do a lot of straight ahead animation you may very well need to create an animated background or if you know how to use blender or maya or something along those lines you may have to have an animated background uh, with with a 3D program and plug the animation of the of the background doing some sort of rotation or movement in order to use your straight ahead animation. So uh, you you have to consider all of that. Uh, so pose to pose animation will prevent problems like that from from occurring. But the beautiful thing about straight ahead animation is that it's organic and stuff like that. So if you can make straight ahead animation work, go for it. Now the in-betweening section of the animation notes page is like, okay, so you first start out with pose to pose animation. You have these two different levels or images or frames. And then um, you want to work with arcs. That way the arm moves in some sort of organic sort of way that makes sense and you don't just kind of have some weird jumbly weird thing going on. So like here you have three keyframes and then all the in-betweens. Boom. Okay. It has a, a section about cyclic animation, like animations that you reuse over and over again. Um, you, if you could just use this cycle over and over again and just have a completely different background that's ever, like, just ever changing. And, and no one would know the difference that you're just using the same uh, frames for him moving, uh, like, just pedaling that bicycle. Uh, people use uh, cyclic animation all the time for things like walk cycles and such like that. That way uh, you give yourself less work um, to do. Uh, if you had to animate each and every single step that a character has to make all the time, you'd never get done with an animation ever. And as you can see, this right here is an animation where it's just recycling the same thing over and over again. Uh, you can even use cyclic animations for something like this where the wind is blowing and everything like that. If you had to reanimate this, something like this, um, let's say you have like thousands of blades of grass and such like that. If you had to do that with every blade of grass plus every moving character, like I said, it'd never get done. It'd, it'd just never get done. Uh, there's also a section about uh, lip syncing, which is pretty helpful. I mean, it talks about uh, things that you have to consider when you're doing lip syncing and everything like that. This is a section that I haven't yet had a chance to read because I haven't really done much uh, with lip syncing. It has a, a section about tabletop animation, which I'm pretty sure deals with light table, pencil and paper, flip book, all that. Uh, pixelation notes and projects. I, I think that has a, that's a section that's about uh, animating with raster images and stuff like that. Paint on glass animation. Creative use of sound. So anyways guys, I, I really hope this tutorial uh, helps. Uh, I hope that reference is something that you can find invaluable. That pretty much concludes it for this video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and uh, have a great day.